Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Uh, this is take two of my rant against uh, CMON. Uh, I guess now two days ago, I found out something that really just pissed me off. And, um, you know, I'd been trying to just let it go, let it go, uh, as far as CMON was concerned. And just to give you some background, I have been quite frustrated with the company since, uh, you know, about Marvel United. Um, Marvel United and Zombicide Second Edition. Now, my first real introduction into CMON was watching, uh, you know, people unbox and present. I uh, watched a lot on um, Rolling Solo at the time. I think this was like 2018 of Zombicide and Green Horde. Um, I was just getting into the hobby at that time, and here was this really fun, amazing dice chucker, and I, you know, just loved everything about it. So I went out and got myself a retail copy of Green Horde, and then a retail copy of Black Plague, and started collecting. And when Zombicide Invader came out, I was like, oh, I, I got a Zombicide, I don't need another one. Well, when Second Edition came out, I thought, okay, this is going to be it. I'm going to go all in here. I'll sell my Green Horde stuff. Um, you know, this is the one. And then I think what really just kind of started to really rub me the wrong way was that within like several months of Zombicide Second Edition coming out, somewhere around here was Marvel United. Anyways, they released uh, Night of the Living Dead Zombicide, which I know was just like a single box. But still, I was like, I just backed a Zombicide game. I... I can't get on board with this. And then, before, you know, well before I ever received my copy of Zombicide Second Edition, they do the Zombicide Undead or Alive. I'm like, wait a minute, how do I know whether or not I'm gonna like Second Edition the most? I don't need five copies of Zombicide. Why do you keep throwing Zombicide in my face? Anyways, um, but what really started to irk me was their handling of the Marvel United uh, two-wave shipping. Formerly, they did not do two-wave shipping. Other companies like Awaken Realms have been doing it for a while, and I really appreciate their two-wave shipping because it allows you to just kind of go in. Uh, you could do just the base pledge. Get the base pledge. Do I like the game? Experience the game. And then they're going to reopen the pledge manager for wave two, which is going to be like the stretch goal box and all the expansions. But you can add on at that point. So... Yes, you're paying a little bit more for two-wave shipping. Yes, you could pay less and get it all in the end. But I really appreciate getting the base box and then being able to decide, is this game really for me or not, and then adding. Whereas CMON, it's, you need to tell us everything you want now, and then we're going to send it all to you until Marvel United came along. And they were very upfront with the fact that they said, okay, we're going to go in with Spin Masters. This is a toy company. And they're going to be producing the game and putting it on the shelves at Walmart. So I said, okay, that's great. I'm fine with that. That's going to really promote the hobby and push these board games more into mainstream. Well, after the you know pledge manager is opened and you know we we pay for our pledges, they're like, oh, we just found out mm -hmm, that Spin Masters is planning to release the core box in Walmart stores in November, but we're not expected to get our pledges until March of the following year. So we're told that our only option is to either wait and watch everybody else get core boxes at Walmart and wait for ours until March, or we can pay extra to get our core box at the same time that they're released at Walmart. So I thought, okay, I really am digging this game. I really want to get my hands on it. I paid the extra. And what I got was A, Walmart putting it on their shelves weeks before I got my copy, or they even started to ship copies. And B, and this really, it's not really Simon's fault, but my copy ended up arriving damaged, and it was just this whole big mess. But either way, I'm starting to get irate. Then, you know, between all the million zombicides that are being thrown at me, they throw a massive darkness in there. Okay. Um, and I never got in on the first massive darkness, but I really liked, you know, the style and I really liked what they were doing. And so I went all in on massive darkness too. And everything is fine. They're not, you know, there's no like pre-release of this, but 
the whole shipping handling of the shipping crisis specifically with massive darkness and marvel united x-men is what's really pissed me off for simon so i pledged massive darkness for massive darkness 2 shortly after uh i believe it was zombicide second edition and before marvel united and I always kind of knew that was going to be a longer plan, but I received Marvel United way long time ago. Did the whole split shipping thing. And then, you know, I pledge for Marvel Zombies somewhere in there and also Marvel United X-Men. Well, I now have received all of my Marvel United, both the original and the X-Men pledge, before I've received my Massive Darkness pledge. And... Part of that is because Simon doesn't appear to know anything about how to properly handle situations like this. And I know some of you are going to cry, oh, you're not being fair on Simon. Um, you know, there's a shipping crisis, there's a pandemic, there's the Chinese New Year, there's Chinese shutdown. Well, I beg to differ because I have witnessed several, plenty of other companies who have handled this shipping crisis in a far more graceful way than Simon has with better customer service, better communication, and in the end, better results for their customers. So let's, let's get into this. Simon is not canceled. I put this up here. I'm canceling Simon. I've decided I'm, I'm done with Simon and here's why. Let's start out with their poor communication skills. This is their shipping status update from April 15th, you know, so over a month ago. At this point, they have already started shipping to people, but they've now let everyone know, well, half of the pledges are, you know, when they started shipping, they said, well, half the pledges are still in China, you know, so half of you are going to get the game and the other half don't. Well, how do you decide whether Joe Schmo down the street gets his pledge over Mary Jane next door gets her pledge versus when do I get my pledge? But fine, I mean, at some point you have to start shipping pledges and somebody's gonna get theirs first and somebody's gonna get theirs last. I understand that, but to say, oh, half of you are gonna get it and the other half aren't, really is not the best way to handle it. But let's look at their communication here. If we look at just, just the US here, because that's what I've been focused on, some containers have arrived and shipping has commenced. Yes, we've known that. Of the remaining containers, half of them had left China. Is it had or have? Um, and are expected to start arriving at the hub in May. Okay, well, it's April 15th. That's two weeks away. The other half, comprised of five containers, was loaded this week. Now, I believe this is on the boat, but it was never clearly expressed. Is that in a truck to take it to the port? Is that on the boat? Is that just loading... You know, again, their communication is awful. Let's go on to the next update. Just US again. No changes from last time with some containers having arrived and shipping ongoing for those, but this all sounds familiar. Of the remaining containers, half of 11 left China and are expected to arrive in hub in May. This all sounds familiar. The other half comprised of five containers is on its way to the hub. Well, wait a minute. Again, I thought loaded this week. Loaded on the boat, right? Whoops, that's not what I want to do. Um, and now all of a sudden, it's on its way to the hub. Did that really mean it was just loaded into a truck? Again, give me anything. Give me anything at this point. Give me any amount of information, and it would be better than just copying and pasting your same shipping status quotes from one update to the next. Okay, well, let's go on to the next one. So this is now two weeks have gone by. We've gotten the same thing. And this is from May 13th. So again, another two weeks has gone by. No changes from last time with the first batch. Again, this is just copied and pasted. Let me scroll that up there so you guys can see it. The other half comprised of five containers is, again, on its way to the hub. How long does it take? to drive a truck to the hub. I realize China is big, but I don't think that these factories are two weeks drive up into the Himalayan mountains. Come on. This literally 
is they may have changed like one or two words, but it's it's exactly the same. It is exactly the same shipping status from two weeks ago. And then we just get FAQs. For those of you who have the game and are enjoying playing the game, enjoy some FAQs. No shipping status. Granted, this was thir three days later, but again, there's there's no like boat identification and I know they can obtain them because many other companies will give you the boat ID. It's free information and there's free tracking websites where I know plenty of people will just sit the, with their tracking website up at work and watch this little pointed arrow thing travel slowly across the sea so they can keep up with it. Or just let us know what does on its way mean or loaded this week mean? Does that mean a truck? Does that mean a ship? What ship? Send us an email. Are they on the ship? They, they've now made it on the ship. Again, their communication is just god awful. <clears throat> so, here I am sitting waiting. I'm thinking, okay, I'm being patient. I realize that there's been a shipping crisis. It really kind of irked me that my Marvel United X Men pledge, which also you know, was split up. Why weren't those containers, why weren't the containers containing the rest of the Massive Darkness pledge put on the boat in place of Marvel X-Men? Because Marvel X-Men was like a whole year and a half after. Massive Darkness 2 is like two years late at this point. Marvel United X-Men was not that late. Why didn't they just hold Marvel United X-Men at the port and put Massive Darkness 2 on the boat? Instead, you've got some people with Marvel United X-Men, some people with Massive Darkness 2, lots of angry people. Again, no communication. But either way, I'm sitting here thinking I'm trying to be patient. This rubs me the wrong way, but it's, it's all going to get here eventually, right? I'm a Kickstarter backer. I'm eventually going to get it. Some people got it before me, but certainly I'm going to be getting this before retail, right? Right? I mean, really, let's be honest. Simon uses Kickstarter as a pre-order device. They use Kickstarter to create hype for their game that they have already, you know, defined and are probably already starting production on and they just want to know how much hype is there for the game and how many expansions they feel like which they've already developed how many expansions do they feel like they can produce and it's essentially a pre-order Simon does not need kickstarter to put its games out it could easily just put out a game on the shelves and do regular pre-orders for it and it would they would sell just as fine but instead, they have gotten into this routine of doing these massive Kickstarters, which raises the hype. So yes, essentially, I didn't back Massive Darkness 2. I didn't pledge because I felt like they needed my support and I wanted to make sure the game made it to market. No, I pledged Massive Darkness 2 because I wanted all of it, but I also wanted it first. And don't give me that crap about, oh, you should just, you know, you're never guaranteed of a product. You are when you back a big company like Simon. You know that this product's, they, they can't afford for Massive Darkness 2 not to make it to retail. Or else they would lose a ton of money. Again, I essentially pre-ordered Massive Darkness 2. So when you pre-order something, you expect to be the first ones to get your hands on it, right? Well, then I start seeing stuff like this. This is Miniature Market. And here we go. Here's Massive Darkness 2 for about $12 cheaper than I would have paid for it if I had just done the base pledge. And that's about $12 away from free shipping. Well, certainly they're just like, this is all pre-orders, right? You know, they're just, they're gonna be shipping sometime in, in mid-summer once everybody else gets their pledges. Nope, this is in stock shipping right now. So I could go on to Miniature Market, pay my 90 bucks, throw in a little something extra in the cart to get free shipping, and have this game in five days, which I guarantee you I'm not going to have my pledge in five days. Okay, well, then you're thinking, oh, well, you know, my pledge is going to come with these stretch goals, right? That oh, there's so many stretch goals that were unlocked daily and at price points. 
those can't possibly, you know, people aren't gonna be able to get their hands on them. So that's why I did Kickstarter. Well, wait a minute. Fae Folk Enemy Box. The Fae Folk were one of the stretch goals. I remember, I clearly remember. Let's look back at the campaign page. Here we go. We're on day eight of the campaign. We're at about $1.75 million. And here we are unlocking all this stuff. This is stretch goals, right? This is, this is how a campaign works. Oh, well, you know what I'm noticing here? Kickstarter exclusive, Kickstarter exclusive, Kickstarter exclusive. Kickstarter. So about five miniatures out of all these stretch goals, I'll get in a stretch goal box. But the other half of this, and this goes the same for Bards and Tinkers. It goes the same for Necromancers and something else. That half of the stretch goals, they have pulled out and they'll sell you in one of these nice little boxes right here like this. Yeah, so my stretch goals aren't even sacred anymore. And again, used to be that stuff like stretch goals you used to eventually get your hands on because I know I've that's how I've acquired a lot of my Zombicide Green Horde and Black Plague stuff since I didn't go in on the Kickstarter. I've found it now years later because they're finally selling off those, you know, brown box stretch goal boxes that they used to do. But again, all this stuff that people always try and hang their hat on. Oh, you're getting stretch goals though. You're not going to get that. That's why you paid, you know, more than you would get it from miniature market. Well, but no, they're not all that sacred. But what really pissed me off, what really set me over the edge and left me to decide to make this video was this. This is Amazon.com, US site. And this is Simon's page. This isn't just any retailer. This is Simon themselves. This is Simon's store. If you go to their store, you are buying directly from them. You'll notice that there is no discount but here is the Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape Core Box. <clears throat> free delivery. I didn't get free delivery, and I certainly ordered way more than $109 worth of stuff. Free delivery. Certainly, there must be they must be holding on to their stock because they realize that people are still waiting. Their backers are still waiting. Nope. Free delivery June 2nd to June 9th. So I could go to Simon directly and get a core box, which means Simon has a massive stock. I don't know how many it is, but they have a quite a large stock, I guarantee, sitting in their warehouse of the core game, of Heavenfall, of uh, Gates of Hell. Now, Gates of Hell does say it's not released till August 27th. Why didn't they do this? for all of these other boxes because it's all about the money for them. They don't really care about the backers. They just want their income so they can continue producing board games and continue doing Kickstarters, which continues to drive income. Why did they not take all of these that they have in stock and say, okay, all you people who have been waiting, who had to watch Marvel United X-Men copies get loaded onto a boat before your copies of Massive Darkness 2 while other people were getting theirs. All of you people who are waiting, we're going to send you just your core box. I'd be fine with that. At least they'd send me something. And then when they get those shipments in from China, they can cut my core box out of my pledge box, put some stuffing in and send me the rest. I'd be perfectly fine with that. Would Simon ever consider that? Hell no. Let's be honest. They're never, ever. They would. It, there, there's nobody in their office. I'm sure if anybody were to have suggested that, they probably were shown the door. Say, it was nice knowing you. And for those of you who might say, oh, well, places like Miniature Market, they probably did the retail pledge. And so, you know, retail pledges just probably came in, in the right, they were loaded on the right container and they came first, so they were delivered. First of all, Miniature Market is not buying up retail pledges from Simon. 
there is no way because the retail pledge of the base box was basically six hundred dollars for six copies there's no way they would pay that much and then turn around and immediately sell it at a discount because they would make no money they would literally be losing twelve dollars plus you know the shipping if they had to cover your shipping so you know that miniature market has gone to them and said outside of the pledge manager outside of the kickstarter campaign we want to sell this product we're willing to buy x number you know probably in the hundreds of your product if you can give us a discount and simon sells them to them directly at a discount which means that they had to have known okay this container contains all the like you know boxes that aren't pledges which would be like a core box a heaven fall box all the mini expansions no this would be an entire container full of just the core box going to miniature market again they allowed that to be shipped out ahead of their backers who are supposed to be the crux of kickstarter and the ones who are helping make this board game happen they just let it go the retail pledges that you guys see on Kickstarter pages is for like the true brick and mortar. Yes, I know Miniature Market has an actual brick and mortar store in St. Louis, but I'm talking about like the friendly, my friendly local game store down the street, which right now maybe might have six copies of Massive Darkness 2. And that's it. Once those six copies are gone, they're gone. And it's probably, you're probably going to pay $120 at my friendly local game store because they probably paid 100 for it and they need to get markups so they can make a profit and keep themselves in business. I mean, it makes sense. Those are the type of people that do the retail pledge on the Kickstarter page. Places like Miniature Market do not. So again, Simon is allowing all of these online retailers, including themselves, to get their hands on and start selling this game well before half of their backers have received their stuff, knowing that they've got boats on the water, knowing that they've got containers still sitting in China. Instead of making it right with their backers, they just push forward with the money making, push forward with the profits, push forward with the selling of their product, because that was the whole thing. That was the whole reason for Kickstarter. It was for them to bring in a load of funds, which they are probably putting towards their next Kickstarter campaign. But again, they created hype for this board game that they wanted to go to retail. They took a bunch of pre-orders and now they're pushing that game to retail and they could give two Fs about whether or not you're still waiting on your pre-order and somebody who completely ignored the campaign and you know didn't pay a lick of it and maybe just now be hearing about massive darkness can get their hands on and if you go to miniature market a discounted copy by next week all of this combined with the fact that simon is just going to double charge us for shipping for Marvel Zombies, which shipping is not going to ha happen for another year. They have no idea what the shipping prices are going to be in a year. And there's plenty of other companies who are setting their shipping prices for similar size games. And it's not even close to what Simon is charging. And I'm not, I, I just did a base box of marvel zombies and i think shipping for just the base box and technically the stretch goal box is 60 dollars. that's ridiculous i didn't do the galactus pledge i don't want a giant four foot tall miniature taking up space in my house no i just wanted the base box and i was perfectly fine with paying 35 dollars for shipping or whatever they had quoted but now they want to charge me 60 and that's not even with me split shipping and getting the core box before the stretch goal box if i did that it's like 80 dollars it basically is the cost of a core box and so i'm really kind of torn as to whether i'm just going to request a refund um i'm certainly not doing split shipping so i know that deadline is coming but i'm just going to let it go because i'm i'm really i'm just I'm pissed and I don't know what to do because I feel like at this point I've invested the money and if nothing else stretch goals I can turn around and just sell the stretch goal box to somebody who's going to want it and it'd be worth some money 
maybe get my shipping money back. But essentially, this is Marvel Zombies will be my last Kickstarter for CMON. I'm not saying I will never play another CMON game again. I'm hoping that Massive Darkness 2 is a big hit with me. Also, Marvel United, both the original and the X-Men version, are big hits in my house. We love the game. It's super easy to play. My kids can figure it out. It's quick. It's fast. I love painting the miniatures. It's a great product. But I'm not falling for this Kickstarter crap again. The next time they put something out on Kickstarter, I may look into it just so I'm aware, but then I'm just going to wait and buy it off a miniature market for super cheap and free shipping. And I'm going to get it before you get it if you pledge CMON Kickstarters too. So, that's really all I got to say about that. I know it was a rant, but I am just beyond pissed. I had to get it off my chest, and I have an avenue to put it out there and have a bunch of people watch it. So, if you're going to cry boohoo for a cool mini or not, take it somewhere else. I don't want to hear it. If you too are upset with how Cool Man or Not has handled a recent Kickstarter, whether it be Massive Darkness 2, Marvel Zombies, Marvel United X-Men, you name it, I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear your complaints in the comments section below. Because I think that part of the problem is that too many people keep quiet about this. simon has got to hear it. simon has got to understand that they are just going to continue to push their base away. And yes... In my opinion, we're the important base. We're the ones who do the all-in pledges. We're the ones who, you know, will buy expansions before we've ever even played the game. The people who are buying off of retail right now are the ones who just want the core box and may only ever buy the core box. But the people who really care about the games and are willing to buy all up all the expansions and collect all everything there is and want it all, they're the ones who do Kickstarters. And they're the ones you're pissing off, Simon. So if you're listening... Fix it. Fix it now. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Again, if you've got a seam on his crap story, please feel free to share it below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.